Hey guys, just wanted to say before we start that I have been streaming on Twitch. I'm going to link the channel in the description and I'd really appreciate it if you would go and drop a follow. Um, tune in sometimes whenever I'm streaming. I will be streaming actually later today. Um, besides that, the patch rundown itself, I'm going to try and keep it short and simple. Uh, there are two other videos that I have been wanting to make right now. And that's a Season 8 Runes Guide for Singe. And that's a Season 8 Items Guide for Singe. And the reason that I haven't been able to yet is because... In every single patch, there have been changes to the runes, there have been changes to the items, and I haven't been able to find a period of time where there aren't going to be any changes for me to just actually sit down and make videos that will stay relevant and not get outdated immediately as soon as the next patch drops. Um, and that's been kind of an issue, but outside of that, it's been pretty okay. I, I do need to, I think, um, put up some more gameplay videos because I have gotten videos and footage via streaming and just through replays like usual of um, different matchups that I think are will be fun to watch. Um, outside of that, let's go ahead and get right into the patch notes. So this patch is supposed to be adjusting um, AD carry itemization and they're saying that Riot is saying that it's going to be good for fighters and assassins also. Um, we'll see about that. I'm hoping for nerfs to Camille Kaisa, Irelia, and Graze. I think those four champions are really, really strong. Um, as far as as far as Singe goes, um, I'll talk about him more when I get to the Shirelia's Reverie section because I know that there is a Shirelia's Reverie nerf, um, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about what has been surrounding Singed in the current meta um, state of the game, things like that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, Pike, don't want to talk about Pike in this video. I can address him in a different video um, if ne if I need to. He looks pretty cool. Moving on, Anivia, Q cooldown decreased. Their early ranks Q damage ratio increased. They want to buff Anivia. Anivia barely sees any play. Um, with the new mana items, she should really be seeing more play than she is, but she's not. So they're giving her a slight, slight buff on the Q to, um, to help with that and maybe raise her win rate a little bit. Moving on, we have Graves. Uh, base attack damage decreased, arc cooldown decreased early ranks. This is kind of what I wanted to see for Graves. He was buffed two patches in a row, which pushed him from being not picked, not played, to being picked every game, highest pick rate jungle and highest win rate jungle. So this is going to bring him a little bit more in line, I think. Um, losing three base AD and gaining 10 seconds, 5 seconds, and then... No seconds on his cooldown at 6, 11, and 16. Not that big of a deal. Graves is still going to be probably, probably in my opinion, the best jungler. Maybe tied with Zinn um, for the for the patch. Um, but he'll just be a little bit less ridiculously oppressive. Like, you'll you'll see a Graves pick in the enemy team. I'm hoping with this nerf that you won't immediately think, oh, they got Graves. We didn't ban Graves. I guess we lose. I think that's what they're trying to avoid with this change. Um, because right now it feels like a lot of the time if the enemy manages to pick Graves and you just lose because he's that strong of a jungler. Um, Kha'Zix. So Kha'Zix, they, uh, a while ago, I'm not sure exactly how long ago, but a while ago they made a change to his ultimate, his R, where if you evolved it first, you would get the ability to, not even first, if you just evolved it in general, um, walking into a bush would grant you movement speed and stealth, and you would maintain that movement speed and stealth as you exited the bush, um, presumably to walk towards another bush. And doing this, you'd be as soon as you get level six and evolved your R, you would be stealthed forever. Um, as long as you ran from bush to bush, you could get around the map without triggering vision, um, and then gank basically being unseen. Um, it gave him a lot of mobility around the map too, because every time he walked into a bush, you get movement speed in addition to the stealth. Uh, what they're doing is they're just completely removing that and they're making the evolved stealth from 1.5 seconds to two seconds. Um, and you get, uh, three casts of it. The unevolved stealth, ca um, stealth is going from 1.5 to 1.25 seconds. So this basically means, I think that. I'm not a I'm not a Kha'Zix expert. I don't play Kha'Zix that much. I I went on the Kha'Zix main subreddit and people are saying that they're going to start maxing or evolving their Q again. I don't know. I feel like this change kind of kills the champion a little bit. He the, the main thing that was bringing him back in into relevance was that he could move from bush to bush while being stealth and had movement speed. It it, it made him like a like kind of a hunter champion. Um I feel like with, with this change, what they're doing is going to make him super duper easy to predict and play against, kind of like the old Kha'Zix. 
Um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like they could have just knocked some of the damage off of him. Like, not even a lot. Just, like, 10 base damage per ability. They could have done that and kept his ultimate the way it was with with the stealth where he could go from bush to bush while invisible and be invisible going outside of bush. I feel like they could have just kept that. Um, and it would have been fine, really. I, I, I'm kind of surprised they took this, this heavy-handed approach with Kha'Zix where they just straight up removed the ability for him to get passive stealth and movement speed because that was a big part of what kind of made him a relevant pick for a while. Um, hope they, I hope that they look at this again and then decide to give him this back and then just knock some of the base damage off because even, even if Kha'Zix has damage as an assassin, what's the point of having damage if you can never get yourself in a position where you can use that damage, right? Um, so maybe they'll reconsider. I don't play Kha'Zix, so not my problem, but that's just my two cents on it. Kindred mark respawn time decreased. First mark spawns earlier. Rift scuttle assists now correctly collect marks. Um... They're doing this because Scuttle Crab is a much more important target now, and they want Kindred to have the time, the timing to be able to fight over that for a mark, even get that as a mark, or if her teammate last hits it while she's attacking it, for her to get the mark on that, if the mark goes on the Scuttle. Um, I'm not, I, I don't know exactly how the Kindred marks work. I think the first one always goes on Scuttle, but I'm not sure. It might go on, like, Raptors or something. Um, but either way, it's a slight Kindred buff. Um, expect to see a little bit more Kindred, but I don't think this is going to make her, like, pick ban or anything like that. LeBlanc. LeBlanc can now queue up cast of W and R in either order. Just makes her quality of life change. Just makes her feel a little bit more smooth. Um, so she can, like, cast an ability and then immediately cast the R version of the ability if she's spamming the key. Just a quality of life change. It makes her a little bit more smooth. Um, easier to proc her Electrocute if she decides to take Electrocute. Um... Yeah, nothing uh, nothing too crazy here. Lee Sin, this will be interesting. Energy restore and passive increase. Q, W, and E now apply cooldown reduction for the duration of their reactivation time. Okay, so Riot's saying that because they took away uh, warding, or the changes to the warding uh, trinket uh, jungle item, that he doesn't have that anymore, that Lee Sin needs uh, something to kind of get him going again because a big part of his mobility was the ability to get uh, the trackers and just jump around with his wards. So the um, cooldown reduction is going to correctly apply um, while his abilities are waiting to reactivate. So, like, say you say you cast an ability, right? Say you cast Q. At that point, your cooldown reduction is already ticking, as if you had casted the second Q already. Uh, at least that's what I that's what I understand from this change. So it just makes CDR a little bit more effective on him because from what I understand before the CDR wouldn't start being taken into account until after he casted the second Q, but now it's going to be casted after the first Q. Kind of like a, like a, like a back-end cooldown. Um, I don't think this helps him that much. Uh, the passive changes, uh, energy restored on the first, he gets a little bit more energy um, per, per auto attack, but it's really not that much. I mean, it's... I don't think that this is going to make Lee Sin that strong. He... Lee Sin can still be picked and played in most team comps. Like, Lee Sin has not been a bad champion since, like, it's been years. He hasn't, he hasn't been bad in years. Um, it could be any meta, and they could pick, your teammate could pick a Lee, besides maybe the tank jungle meta that we had a while back. Like, besides that meta, if it's not a tank jungle meta, and Lee Sin's not nerfed in the ground, I mean, he's always been a relevant character, and this just is a slight buff to him. This is mostly quality of life type stuff, so... Uh, I expect to see a little bit more Lee Sin. I don't think this is anything too serious. Rakan. Rakan is very obnoxious. He has really hard engage. He has lots of crowd control. He has good sustain. Um, if he has a Zaya on his team, he makes his Zaya like, super powered. Um, they have interactions with each other, like their improved recall, um, their feather interaction that makes them together really obnoxious to play against. What they're doing is they're taking away some of the healing um, from his Q, and they're get, taking away some, some of the shield from his E. Uh, it looks like it's just 10, 10 shield value on every single rank. Yeah, 10 shield value on every single rank. It's This is not that serious of a nerf. The biggest nerf is the Q, um, giving less, less sustain in lane. It's going to force people who pick Rakan, who is an engaged support, to actually engage and fight. I, I, I don't think that this is going to take Rakan away from relevance. 
as as long as Zaya is strong, Rakan will be strong because of how much synergy they have together. And even re without Zaya, like Rakan, just with any other AD carry, he's still going to be pretty freaking strong because his his cooldowns are much lower, his mobility is much higher, his engage is much more reliable than what so many other supports bring bring to the table. Think about think about Rakan's engage compared to a support like Leona. Leona has EQ and then maybe an R or maybe R to start off and then like a QE things like that. Rakan, if he misses his knockup, he can he can dash back to his um his allies and then his his cooldowns are so low that he can have another knockup in a little bit. Um part of the reason why is because he is just really good at using the support items that are available to him currently compared to a champion like Leona who when you think support engage like I think Leona, Alistar, like Rom, things like that. I don't, I don't think really Rakan, but Rakan is an engaged champion. Um, maybe he's just a new champion, so I don't see him that way that much. But what I'm trying to say is, why would you pick Leona when you could pick Rakan? He does everything that she is supposed to do, and he has a heal on top of it. So I feel like there's really no point. Um, he can peel just as well because the same abilities that he uses to engage can be used to peel. Um, and for that reason, I don't think that Rakan will be pushed out of meta with this. Um, the other main engaged support available right now, I think, is Alistar. Um, so you're going to see a lot of Rakan and Alistar, probably, depending on how the marksman changes shape up, and we'll get to those in a second. Talia, um, increasing her base move speed, increasing her base health. They are increasing the movement speed she gets when she's near a wall and they're reducing the amount of time it takes to get that movement speed. And then they're... Oh, that's a lot of changes on the Q. Uh, no longer deals AoE. Minions no longer take reduced damage from additional rocks. She no longer gains a movement speed when she's on worked ground. Casting Q on worked ground no longer refunds mana. And a new thing about this is while she's on worked ground, the Q cost is reduced to one mana. And then they are reducing the cooldown of the ability at every rank until max rank. The W cooldown is going to go from 16 at level 1 to 12 at level 1. Um, Unraveled Earth. I think that... Okay, hold on. Let me read this. They're reducing the base damage on... the or Sorry, the initial base damage on Unraveled Earth by 5? Five? By 5 at rank 4, 10 at rank 3, 15 at rank 2, and 20 at rank 1. Um... They're just trying to make this a little bit little bit less rewarding to max first. Um, and they're changing the Weaver's Wall duration from 8 seconds at level 16 to 5, 7 seconds at level 11 to 5, 6 seconds at level 1 to 5. I'm not sure what... What is it that they want with, with Talia? I, I think I need to understand this a little bit more. I'm going to read the little paragraph. Talia has a lot of strengths that are great in pro play and just okay elsewhere. A lot of that comes from Q's wave clear, so the bulk of our mechanical changes focus on that ability with tuning elsewhere, so they, they want her to be less reliant on Q, apparently. Um, Talia will have to work harder to shove a wave in roam so that her opposing laner has more room to punish these roams. We're also decreasing the terrain control she brings from her ultimate, as it's bringing too much utility beyond just roam strength. So they think that Q is too powerful, and they think her ultimate is too powerful. And we kind of... Um, we can kind of see that here, where they're, they're making W have a very uh, low cooldown compared to the old one. Nerfing R, and they're, this looks like a lot of Q nerfs, too. Um, I don't know what they want with Talia. This is really weird. Like the, the, the passive, to me, this passive says we want Talia to roam. But then they nerf her ultimate, they nerf her E, and they nerf her Q. So how is, how is a champion who can't clear successfully going to roam? She has to give up all of her CS to Rome. I don't know. Um, I don't know what they want with Talia. I'll probably ask people who play Talia what they want with with this. But it looks like it, it looks like they want to adjust her, but they're ending up just nerfing her. Um, sucks. Urgot. Collision radius decreased. Base attack speed increased. Passive damage to monsters increased early. R no longer roots Urgot while he's grinding a champion to death. So. This collision radius, he won't get stuck in minions as much because his model is gonna, or his hitbox is gonna be smaller for collision. Um, base attack speed's going up. Passive echoing flames, damage to monsters from 25 at level one to 60 at level one, losing five damage on his passive at level 18. Not that that doesn't mean anything. The biggest thing is 
from going from 25 damage to 60 at level 1, which means if Urgot has to farm a jungle camp, he can farm a jungle camp. If he needs to take a scuttle, a scuttle crab, he can take a scuttle crab. Um, Urgot can no longer be rooted while grinding a victim to death with his ultimate. These are, again, I think mostly quality of life changes. Nothing about this says to me that Urgot's going to become a pick ban. Um, you might see him a little bit more, but this is not this is not going to help Urgot that much. Uh, Victor, Q discharge damage increased at later ranks. R damage ratio increased. So Q siphon power discharge damage going from ooh he is gaining forty base damage on the discharge for Q at rank five. That's actually quite a hefty buff. And then they're actually buffing the ratio on R too. Um, so they're saying that like Anivia. The mana changes and the itemization changes didn't benefit Victor as much, so they're just buffing his abilities. These are actually pretty pretty significant buffs. Expect to see a lot more Victor now because of these buffs. These are the type of buffs that Victor mains have been waiting for. Um, this is a very significant buff compared to something like what they did with, with Urgot. These are not quality of life. This is straight up saying, we want Victor to be played more. Here's some more uh, stuff for his kit. Xin Zhao. Base AD growth decreased, E slow decreased. So Xin Zhao, like Graves, benefited hugely from the new patch because he's really good at skirmishing early. Um, he's good at securing skull crabs. He's good at he's good at ganking. He can still farm pretty effectively. Um, they think Riot thinks that he is a bit too good at that, and he goes into mid game a little bit too strong. So they want to reduce the slow on his E and his um, AD growth. These are very 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 light nerfs. Yeah, uh, Zin Zhao will still be very strong. He'll still be picked. He'll probably him and Graves, I think, will be the most picked jungler still. Just if one team picks Graves and one team picks Zin, it's not going to be an auto win either way. You can the matchup can go either way, but they're still both going to be very very strong because they're still probably both the two strongest early game skirmishing junglers, um, even more so than Lee Sin. So Zin Zhao very very light nerfs. Nothing to worry about for for Zin Zhao players here. Zyra, a buff, e root, e root duration increased. Um, I guess they just want Zyra to be played more. I don't know if they want her to be played more in the support role or in the mid lane role. When Zyra was released, they wanted her to be a mid lane mage, but as time has gone on, she's evolved more into a support, so this is probably aimed at uh, support Zyra changes. Um, I'm not super duper familiar with, with everything that has to do with support Zyra, but a buff's a buff. I expect to see a little bit more of her because gaining 0.25 seconds, 0.25 seconds, 0.25 seconds. Or sorry, no. Actually, the the rank 3, 4, and 5. Wait, okay. So rank 5, she gains 0.25. Rank 4, she gains 0.25. Rank 3, she gains... Okay, yeah. She gains 0.25 seconds in every single rank. So I expect to see a little bit more Zyra. Marksman, base stat adjustments. Let's read this. The dominant strategy in bot lane has been over time sustaining through the lane and scaling into team fights using health regen and fleet footwork. Um, fleet footwork gives a lot of health regen if you combine that with the Doran's Blade. Um, it's hard to get poked out of bot lane if you know what you're doing, from what I understand. So, what they want to do is I'm assuming they're going to nerf a lot of base health regens, um, increase base health, and then nerf fleet footwork or the sustain from that i'm not sure but they just they, they just want they want two v twos to happen more in bot lane instead of just waiting for a jungler to gank and then your ad carry getting a double kill and then you scale into mid game with two items and you're unkillable and you're unstoppable they want bot lane to be more about bot lane fighting bot lane i think so let's see i, I guess we can just okay they're reducing some base ad's um ad growth they're increasing some they're reducing armor, okay? They want more fighting. They're increasing base health, so they want more fighting. They're, the health growth is going up, but the health regen, this is the big one, the health regen on almost all of these champions is going down. So they, if, if you're losing armor and you're losing health regen, that means that once you get hit by an auto attack, that damage will, one, do more damage, and two, it's going to stick on you longer which means they want 2v2s to happen more in bot lane. They don't want sustain wars as much unless you pick, like, Soraka and Sona. Then you can have a sustain war, from what I understand. Hunter's Machete Compensation. Base attack damage decreased. Bonus attacks to level 1, e level one increase. Compensation for the Machete changes last patch. So they, um, they changed Machete last patch to 
kind of behave differently. I, I don't know exactly what they did to it. I'm assuming that they just um, made it not as good for straight up auto attackers. So they are giving Yi two less um, AD, but they're giving him a lot more bonus attack speed. Hold on. Let me actually, um, I'm going to look up what the changes to Machete were. I'll be right back. Okay, so what they did with Hunter's Machete was they removed the attack speed that the item gave and they increased the da the on-hit damage to uh, from 25 to 35 to uh, to monsters. I'm pretty sure it was 25 to 35. Uh, let's see. Jungle items, Hunter's Machete. Damage on hit, yeah, 25 to 35. So that hurt auto-attack junglers like Master E and Nocturne. So they are giving them some attack speed. Um, eight eight percent attack speed each, and they're just taking away a little, a little teeny tiny bit of AD, but it should help them out in the jungle. And then they're giving randomly Diana's listed here. They're giving her attack speed on her passive. They're increasing it by ten at rank one. Yeah, ten at rank one. I I don't know why Diana's here in this section, but I guess I guess we have that. Um. Okay, new items, Storm Razor, 3200 gold, BF Sword, Pickaxe, Dagger, 725 gold, 70 AD, 30% attack speed, unique passive, Storm's Edge, if you haven't attacked in the last 3 seconds, scaling down with attack speed, your next basic attack will critically strike for 160% damage, plus 1% per 1.5% critical strike trance, max 200%, and grant 10% movement speed for 1.75 seconds, that's, that's a fucking mouthful. Oh my god. Okay, so basically, Jin. Jin, because this item says scaling down with attack speed. If you're if you're an AD that doesn't rely as much on attacking fast as you do attacking consistently, all I can really think of is Jin there. Um, then Storm Raise is gonna be good for you because you have more crits whenever you are re you basically after you reload, you get a crit. Um, and if you're holding your shots for a while, you'll, you'll have increased, um, crit, uh, crit damage. Um, three seconds is what it takes to get the guaranteed crit, but it's not a, it's not a 200%, it's not a 200% crit. It's a 160% base crit, which can increase up to 200%, whereas a normal crit is just 200%. But for a character like Jin, who whenever he crits, he gains special effects, um, this is a good item. I don't know how... I, I've heard people saying this is going to be broken. I don't know if it's going to be broken. But it just seems like a good Jin item because they're taking away Essence Reaver from him. Um, I guess Sivir doesn't get Essence Reaver as much either now. I'll, I'll talk about the Essence Reaver changes when I get to it, though. Infinity Edge. We're making Infinity Edge into a true scaling item. One which amps up the power of Critical Strike, but isn't itself a Critical Strike item. So, Infinity Edge, they're taking away the 20% crit chance, and they're taking away... The 50% bonus crit damage. So crits are going to max out at 200% crit now. Instead of 250 with IE. Now the thing with this is. They're changing it so that it doubles crit chance. And 15% of your crit strike damage is converted to true damage. So this is not a first item anymore. I'm not sure what's going to be the first AD carry item. It might be Essence Reaver. It might be um, Storm Reaver. Uh, Storm Razor. I'm not sure. But... Well, actually, yeah, it, it, it could be, now that I think about it, it could be Storm Razor, because it's going to give crit on the first attack, it's going to give attack speed, it's going to give AD, it might just be Storm Razor, but this is not going to be a first item for AD carries anymore, this is going to be a augment item, like a like a additional item to increase the crit chance you already get. So, say you have like a Zeal and an IE, you have 40% crit chance in AD AD. Um... Yeah, it's the, the the true damage is is kind of worrisome because I I don't think that a lot of true damage is healthy for the game. Um, especially whenever an AD carry can pump out multiple crits in a row and start getting true damage on every single crit. I I think it's gonna make AD carries late game even more ridiculous than they already are. And they're already pretty ridiculous. I don't know why they're going in this direction with the AD carry changes. I was expecting some readjusts and some nerfs this is just infinity edge seems like a straight up better late game item now which is where ad carries are the strongest but the problem is 
there's nothing that can really challenge a late game AD carry except another late game AD carry. And I feel like that's that's part of a problem, not just with the meta, but with the League of Legends design in general, where the game is balanced in such a way that no matter what you get to, you always or what you have in a game, you always get to a point where it's just four people supporting an AD carry versus four people supporting an AD carry. And that can be kind of frustrating. Um, maybe Maybe in time it'll change. Maybe in time. And I, I could even be wrong about these changes. I don't think I am. But from what I can tell... Sorry, I just punched the microphone. From what I can tell, these these changes are making AD carries more relevant in the late game. And they're taking away some mid-game power so they don't spike quite as early because Infinity Edge is not going to be the, a rush item anymore. But then I'm just thinking, couldn't they just build Storm Razor instead and have the same mid-game power spike that they had on 8.10 and all the patches before that. I don't know. I, I don't think that Riot thought this change out very well, especially considering these two items, Storm Razor and uh need to go back, Storm Razor and Infinity Edge. So hopefully they change it. Essence Reaver, the ultimate power spike. So they want Essence Reaver to be be meant for spell casting AD carries. Um, think Ezreal, I guess, think Kaisa, um, who else comes to mind? Varus, Lucian, um, Sivir, Jin, not Jin, not Jin, it doesn't give crit. So what Essence Reaver is going to be doing is it's going to be restoring 1% of your missing mana on basic attacks instead of on, on crit. So this is not a crit item anymore. And after you cast your ultimate, your next basic attack within 10 seconds grants Essence Flare for 8 seconds, granting 30% attack speed and basic attacks to refund, or causing basic attacks to refund 20% of your remaining ultimate non-ultimate cooldowns for uh, on a 30 second cooldown. So basically on every fight that your AD carry casts their ultimate, they're going to have a shit ton of abilities able to be cast. The champions that I can see benefiting most from this are... Lucian, Ezreal, and Kaisa, because they're they're very ability reliant. Um, Ezreal is going to be absolutely insane with this item. I'm thinking like uh, a new build path for Ezreal: Mirror Mana, Essence Reaver, um, Archangel Staff, and how are you going to deal with an Ezreal who has an arcane shift every like two seconds, three seconds? Okay, realistically, like maybe every three seconds, he's going to have arcane shift um, at level 18. That's that's kind of insane to me, but. We'll see. I mean, I, I, I think that those AD carries are going to absolutely pop off in, in this patch. Those three, um, Ezreal, Kaisa, and Lucian, which is kind of concerning because Kaisa is already so strong. Um, Ezreal, I think, is a little, little bit more balanced. Still quite strong in the late game because of his because of the new build where people are going double tier into Murr, Mana, and Archangels. Um, but I think that Mostly Kaisa, who is already an absurdly strong champion, will benefit from this way, way, way more um, than most champions besides Lucian and Ezreal. And so Kaisa might just become a permaban in 8.11 with this um, item. I al Personally, I already permaban Kaisa. I think that character is beyond broken. Um, but they are obviously thinking that Kaisa needs a little bit more help, and I, I disagree with that personally. Um, Last Whisper... Armor penetration changed from 35% targets bonus armor to 10% targets bonus armor, and Lord Dominic's regard armor penetration changed from 35% bonus to 35% total. They are removing the Giant Slayer passive, removing Giant Slayer from from the game. So this is basically just the old Last Whisper. If you guys remember old Last Whisper, that's Lord Dominic's regard. It's just the old Last Whisper, <laughs> and the the current Last Whisper is going to be a mini Last Whisper, like the old one. Um, pretty much say say goodbye to tank meta with, with the heavy-handed AD carry itemization buffs that they have with these three items, Storm Razor, Infinity Edge, and Essence Reaver, and the addition of Lord Dominic's giving 35% total armor pen. Say goodbye to tanks. Tanks are going to get completely shredded next patch. You're not going to see any tanks. If someone plays a tank, they're probably trolling. I, I think it, after reading these these changes to AD carry itemization, what the fuck is a tank supposed to do? They already nerfed Tabby. 
Like, how is a tank supposed to stand up to an AD carry with a support and a team behind him? Pumping out 35% total armor pen, 15% true damage on, on autos that crit. With it, with with the crits being amplified, or with the crits being um, twice as frequent due to Infinity Edge, like I don't know, this this is kind of absurd to me because Riot is 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 so far gone in the AD carry meta and the AD carry strength and bot lane strength overall already, and then to even pile on more for bot lane to use and abuse. It, it it this this seems a little bit too much to me. So, um, we'll see. I don't I don't think that eight point one one is going to be very kind to uh, people who play tanks. Tanks are going to get shredded. Um, moral reminder: they are changing it to have less AD and changing it from thirty five percent total uh, bonus or sorry thirty five percent bonus to twenty five percent total armor penetration. So less total armor penetration than Lord Dominic's. But remember, moral moral reminder has um healing healing reduction on it. So that's the only reason you ever built Mortal Reminder over Lord Dominic's is healing reduction, and they're going to keep it that way in the next patch. Critical Strike items, the average cost of crits going up, it doesn't matter because Infinity Edge doubles all crit chance, so you save gold anyways. Um, this is unique, I, it doesn't matter. I don't think anyone's stacking Brawler's Gloves. They're removing Cloak of Agility because... Um, they're increasing the so they're increasing the cost of brawler's gloves, removing cloak of agility from builds, and I guess everything's gonna build out of brawler's gloves now. Zeal increasing the cost, reducing crit. Okay, so so this is this is I guess where the AD carry nerfs, the itemization nerfs are coming in. They're increasing the cost on all of these, and I'm assuming they're losing some base crit chance. Uh, it doesn't look like it on the upgraded items, but they're increasing the cost on the four big attack speed crit items. For, for AD carries, so that means that they're, what this means to me, when I read this, I see that their their two item power spike is going to be weaker, but their late game is going to be significantly stronger than what it is right now. So expect to, I think in 8.11, um, the AD carry meta will continue. It will be less obnoxious in, in the mid game where AD carries are currently spiking really hard, but late game, they're going to be complete monsters um and the early game expect a little bit more 2v2 skirmishing because of the the regen changes and everything i don't know the the changes don't make sense to me because they're 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 just they're, they're just changing the power curve of 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 80 carries but they're not really addressing the problem the, the problem has always been at least in my opinion with 80 carries that the whole game is balanced around them and the later in the game it goes, the more it just becomes 80 carry plus four supports versus 80 carry plus four supports. With 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 the addition of currently in patch um, 8.10 and the patches before that, 80 carries have the ability to power spike off of two items, which is Infinity Edge and a completed Zeal item of their choice, and then just team fight and be really really strong because these items these items here were so cheap, but they can't do that anymore in the next patch with with the addition of their late game being ridiculously stronger. So I don't know what, what Riot wants with these changes. All it's going to do is exacerbate the late game problem and make the mid game problem a little bit less re relevant. Um, Lifesteal items, they're decreasing the cost of Blade of the Ruined King by 200 and decreasing the cost of Bloodthirster by 200. This might help uh, fighters who use Bork. I, I doubt it because if fighter is going to use Bork, they might as well just get a Titanic or sorry, a Ravenous Hydra instead for lifesteal. Um, I know Jax used to get Bork, but most Jaxes now just go Titanic into Titanic Hydra into uh, Triforce. Um, Bloodthirster, on the other hand, with that being cheaper, it will help marksmen late game um, to buy this item when they need the lifesteal. Ooh. Maw of Malmordius, magic resist increased, base shield value increased, shield no longer scales with bonus magic resist. Champions who like Maw of Malmordius aren't looking at stack resistances, so we're tweaking its shield value to not scale with future magic resist accordingly. Um, they're saying that because the main buyers of Maw don't get more than one MR item, it doesn't make sense for it to get more shield the more MR you get. So they are changing it from 45 to 50 MR, and they're changing the shield from a scaling 300 base shield to just 350 base shield with no scaling. 
overall, I think it's a buff to Maw because they're right. Most characters who buy Maw don't get more and more than Maw. Um, but this makes Maw itself much stronger. Something, something I, I guess, to watch out for me as a Singe main to watch out for if champions get Maw is that 350 health in magic damage shield is a lot um, versus a dot champion. Guardian Angel, cost increased, armor increased. We wanted to allow marksmen who face heavy physical damage to get a chain vest rather than just cloth armor, knowing they'd eventually build it into something. Guardian Angel was a natural choice, even if it required a higher price point. So they're changing it from building out of a cloth armor BF Sword stopwatch to a uh, chain vest BF Sword stopwatch. And they're increasing the overall armor value on it from 30 to 40. 40 armor being how much you get from chain vests. So if an AD carry is getting shit on by AD assassins, and they need to get an armor item they can just get a ga but build it out of a chain vest so they have some immediate assistance against the physical damage the whole this whole patch seems centered around 80 carries um i i know I'm, I'm being a dead horse at this point but it's just it's just more of the same help to 80 carries um all right so we're, we're here at banners of command and shirley's reverie um, I guess this is a good time to talk about, uh, no, actually, I'll wait until Shirley is ever to talk about, uh, to talk about Singed. Banner of Command. Enhanced minions are highly resistant to magic damage and physical damage rather than entirely immune to magic damage only. So they're, basically, this change means that I don't think Banner of Command is even going to be worth buying anymore. The thing, I'm, the thing about Banner of Command is that AP and magic damage champions would buy it against each other to just get into like a side lane push war or or nullify or even make it difficult for an enemy magic damage champion to clear a cannon minion or have that cannon minion start pushing towers. Um, they're also removing the CDR on it. And okay, so they're removing the CDR on it. The minion that you buff no longer gets immunity magic damage, but they get 70% damage redu reduction from champions. Um, they appear on the mini map for some reason, and allies can now see floating combat numbers for the damage dealt by banner minions. Um, so it's it's just gonna make a minion really tanky, is what it's gonna do. It's gonna make a minion super tanky, and I don't think so, this, this item will not be bought anymore because even if a minion's tanky, as long as you can hurt it with your abilities, you can still kill the minion. The thing that made the old banner so good versus magic damage champions was they couldn't deal with the banner. And that's why they would have to call like a jungler or an ally champion, like a like your AD or your jungler, to come and help kill the banner. Or you could use a dematerializer on the banner and kill it that way. With this, I don't think that's gonna be that good anymore. Now the problem with this comes when, especially from from a singe perspective, whenever you play a tank um, versus a, an AP bruiser or uh, an AP mage in top lane. Um, or Singed, who is an AP bruiser versus a mage in top lane, a ranged mage, you no longer have the option of just being able to, to buy a banner and have that be your first item to kind of help curb the lane bullying and help relieve some of the pressure that they get as an advantage of being a ranged champion versus you as Singed. That advantage being that they get lots of harassment, they get lots of um, CS over you, you can't just build a banner anymore. Like, like say, say you're playing Singed versus a cannon. Cannon is a AP range champion who deals lots of harassment in the lane. He gets a CS lead on you. He pokes you out of lane. The way it works right now is you can just kind of slowly build towards your banner of command. And then once you have it, you can set the banner of command down and then start pushing him back in the other direction and try and take his tower or use that banner to, to, uh, to push him in and make cannon take so long to deal with the banner of command that you can even walk behind the tower and like start proxy farming and get back some of your cs that you were missing from taking harassment um because it's no longer like a a um viable buy versus magic damage champions i don't see myself building banner of command anymore i don't think anyone else probably will either uh that brings me to shirelia's reverie now this is what i've been waiting to talk about shirelia's reverie um as far as Singed goes, a lot, of, a lot of newer Singed players have been taking this item first because it's so cheap. It's dirt cheap. It's 2,100 gold. Now, 2,100 gold is is not a lot. That's uh, to, to put it in, in perspective, Singed's uh, 
Rylai's Crystal Scepter costs 2,600 gold. That's 500 more gold than 2,100, than 2100 gold. That's about four and a half creep waves. Uh, now, if you can have a complete first item with an active, complete four and a half creep waves before you can, like, your next most valuable item. With a better build path, by the way. Uh, Shirelia is built out of Aether Wisp and Kindle Gem. So you got passive movement speed during your, the build and passive CDR during the build which increased to more movement speed during the actual final item, it was just a really, really, really good first item for for, for Singed. Um, I think that's part of what is contributing to his his higher win rate right now. Um, and speaking of his win rate, I, I don't think that he is actually that OP. I just think that the way that the meta has shaped up over like the last six months has been really good for him. Um, it started off with nerfs to Nar, nerfs to Kennen, nerfs to Fiora, nerfs to Jace, which were like his biggest counters. All four of those got nerfed within the span of two patches. Um, Rylai's and Leand Rylai's got buffed twice, and Leandry's got buffed once. Um, and then Shirelia's became a thing. Shirelia's being introduced made him have a really, really good first item. Now what's happening on this patch is tanks are no longer going to be relevant. Tanks being meta in top lane for so long is is part of the reason why i think Singe had a high win rate because he he excelled so much versus them um now with i think the meta shifting probably back into bruisers assassins and late game 80 carries you're not gonna have that much more success on Singe, at least at least free success you're not gonna have nearly as many free lanes like playing singed versus orn that's free that's completely free orn can't do shit to you but playing Singed versus like Camille, playing Singed versus a Fiora, playing Singed versus uh, Nar, playing Singed versus a Kennen, playing Singed versus Lissandra, um, Vladimir, Heimer, like all sorts of top laners that aren't tanks. Play Most top laners that are not tanks, with the exception of things like Jax, Singed tends to lose to them in lane and he gets outscaled by them. We'll see how it goes, um, because I think a, a lot of the help that Singed got was from the new runes but they're also removing one of his uh really good runes this patch in favor of something else that i don't like quite as much um, i'll talk about that when i get to it but i think with all of those things kind of being slowly reverted as time goes on i don't think that singe will remain that strong of a champion as time goes on but only time will tell i think that he's gonna get quite a bit weaker this patch just my opinion um, okay, Shralia's Reverie specifically, they're increasing the cost from 2100 gold to 2250 gold. Um, movement speed is, the base movement speed, the passive movement speed, while you're not using it, it's going down from 8% to 5%. They're giving it mana regen because it's going to build out of a fairy charm. And the active cooldown is going up from 60 seconds to 90 seconds. Now, the way this is changing, I, I don't see myself building this on Singed. I think if you're going to spend 2250 gold on an the item, then... You might as well go ahead and save up for the 2600 gold on uh, on Rylai's and just buy that first. With the way this is changing, it's going to give less movement speed outside of the, the active. So you're not going to have the ability to just, you know, have the full 8% movement speed and have tier 1 boots and just have this as your very first item and still be pretty quick. You're not going to have that anymore. Um, it's only going to be 5% and the cooldown is going to be high enough to where you can't just use the cooldown every time you need it. It's going to be from 60 seconds to 90 seconds. That's a 50% cooldown increase. Think about that for a second. That's that's a quite a long time for an item. I think that is going to make it so it's just really not not worth buying as a first item on Singe anymore. Some supports can probably buy it, but I don't think Singe will be able to. So on to Shirelia's Reverie itself. Um, Shirelia's Reverie, they are increasing the cost from 2100 to 2250. Uh, they could leave the rest of the changes off, and that alone would make me not want to buy it, because that's a creep wave, about a creep wave worth of gold. Um, creep wave, or creep wave and a half, depending on whether or not it's a cannon wave, um, that you need more to build the full item. Uh, that's a pretty decent delay on a power spec, especially if you're farming pretty well. Um, they're also changing it to build out of a fairy charm in addition to Kindle Gem and Aether Wisp, so it gives mana regen decreasing the base movement speed. So this is the movement speed when you're not using the active from 8% to 5% and the cooldown from 60 seconds to 90 seconds. So the cooldown, that's a 50% cooldown increase. That's a pretty heavy nerf, this right here. 
Um, and the movement speed outside of, outside of the uh, active is also going down. Which, all that combined, I think this is truly going to be a pure support item. I don't see Singed buying it. Vladimir might buy it because the stats are still really good for Vladimir, but Singed mostly wanted it for the movement speed. And he's not going to be able to get it there because the movement speed is going down and the cooldown is going up. Um, moving on, Enchantment. Runic Echoes now builds out a Fiendish Codex rather than Lost Chapter. Ability power increased. They they want it to just have a little bit bigger of a power spike, I guess. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. They're, the, 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 the total cost is is the same but the build path is changing and it's also getting more total ap so the the, the build path going from lost chapter to fiendex to fiendish codex means that you don't have to build an entire lost chapter you can just get the 900 gold fiendish codex and the 375 gold mana crystal and have more ap and the build path is is a little better for those mage junglers who need it or at least that's what they're saying okay runes um, they're nerfing fleet footwork again. They're changing the movement speed you get from 30 to 20%. And they are removing the additional healing from crit. They are changing the healing you get from minions to 100% healing from melee minions and 20% healing from range min minions. And the AP ratio on the heals going up? Yeah. So they just they just want to cut down on the overall sustain that you get from this rune and this this should cut down on the sustain that you get from the rune. Um that's weird though. Like it, it's going to give more healing from melee minions and less healing from range minions. So our people are our, our range champions who use this rune mostly just hitting ranged minions. I don't understand like that's weird. It says TLDR marksmen have access to a ton of sustain in the laning phase, which makes the choice between early and late game too tilted towards late game and decreases the overall impact of laning decisions like poke slash bullying. Weakening the heal range champions get from fleet footwork should go a long way towards making trades more meaningful. Um, they say it's reducing the overall sustain, so I believe them, but if you're getting 100% healing from hitting a melee minion, then is it really like reducing the sustain i don't know domination okay so there's a new keystone for domination called hail of blades hail of blades gain 50 to 100 percent attack speed scaling from level 1 to level 18 the for the first three attacks made against enemy champions if more than 1.5 seconds elapses between this between attacks this effect will end hail of blades allows you to temporarily exceed the attack speed limit and the cooldown is five seconds out of combat, so this will be really good for like like Vayne. I think Vayne can get a tr uh, silver bolts proc pretty much instantly if she can if she can break the attack speed cap. Um, really good for Vayne in trades. I think Vayne will probably be, be just because of this keystone. She might be a much better champion um, in patch eight point. 8.11 and then I guess yeah so this is the other thing I want to talk about they're they're moving ultimate hat from sorcery into uh into domination and they're changing it so that instead of getting uh, additional CDR on your ultimate every time you cast it it's every time you get a bounty hunter stack which is um whenever you get a killer and assist which I think this will be good for Vayne too because Vayne's very 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 ultimate reliant as a champion too. So like these two together I think will will make it a very good patch for Vayne. Um, in addition to the ridiculous late game AD carry item changes, yeah, I didn't think about that. With all of the AD carry items shifting towards late game, but Riot saying they don't like the late game of AD carries, they're just co completely contradicting themselves. It's going to make Vayne a very strong pick of this patch, I think. Uh, which leads me to Sorcery. They are actually removing Ultimate Hat from Sorcery, so we don't get to go Ultimate Hat anymore as Singed. Which I think sucks because Singed is a very he's way he's way more ultimate reliant than most other champions. Um, you basically can't you, you don't stand a chance in a 1v1 
um, versus most characters without your ultimate. You don't stand a chance in a team fight versus most characters without your ultimate. You can't really do a whole lot without your ultimate as singed. So this means that we don't have ultimate CDR passively from ultimate hat anymore. Even if it's just a few seconds like that, that cooldown matters. That's a really important cooldown for Sandra. It's his main cooldown. It's and if you don't have your ultimate running, you can't really do anything in a team fight or even a skirmish because you just get blown up and die instantly. You don't have the movement speed. You don't have the damage output. You don't have the regen. You don't have the resistances. So having less of that is pretty bad. And I, I actually think that he's so reliant on his ultimate that the new rune, even even though it seems really good for him, I don't think it will be that good for him um, compared to ultimate hat. Like, yeah, Nimbus Cloak, it's not a bad rune for Singed, but I think the ultimate hat was just better, if that makes sense. Um, let's read what, Nim what Nimbus Cloak actually does. Uh, shortly after casting your ultimate, gain 100 movement speed decaying over the next 2.5 seconds. For the duration of the movement speed increase, you can pass through units. 60 second cooldown, so you'll have it every time you ult a Singed. Um, Unlike other runes, Nimbus Cloak's cooldown is affected by cooldown reduction. Doesn't really matter for Singe because you're not going to get his ultimate past or, or below 60 or 60 seconds without a huge amount of CDR. Uh, like, yeah, it, it's good. <laughs> it's it's good for Singe, but it's not as good as Ultimate Hat, so it's just, it's just going to hurt him in the long run if you take away a strong option like that from him, in my opinion. Inspiration, they are changing minion demon they're delaying de dematerializer until 240 seconds um so just two more waves until you can use dematerializer i don't think this is that big of a deal other than the fact that you can't use the dematerializer to push in the third wave anymore uh versus the champion that's harassing you really hard which is one of the main perks of taking dematerializer now is that you can just get your dematerializers up on the third wave and then just start casting them on the cannon minion and shoving that wave in um the materializer will still be really good. I think it'll still be a super good good rune just because of the amount of damage it gives you against against minions throughout the game to help you wave clear quickly. But it won't be as good as quite as good as it was before. Still be pretty good though. the The level three cheese will not be viable anymore though with the uh, dematerializers. Turret durability. Inhibitor and Nexus turret health decreased. Inhibitor turret health regen increased. Nexus inhibitor turrets can now only regen up the next third. Um, so they, if if you can't break a tower, they get a lot of health back, but the actual health of the tower is going way down. Nexus turrets are going from 3,600 to 2,700. They're losing 900 health. Inhibitor turrets are losing 300 health. Um, I don't think that this this is a pointless change it's not going to matter if they have that much less health there's not going to be a lot of situations where you can't take the tower if you're sieging the tower like 300 less health is a lot of health if you consider the amount of armor and mr that turrets have this is this this change doesn't really do anything at least in my opinion it, it just makes the turrets weaker turret gold more the turret gold reward is going to be granted locally rather than globally um just this just helps uh i like this change actually because it means if you if you take a tower by yourself if you're split pushing you get more of a reward it rewards you for uh pushing and pushing side lanes it rewards you for getting tower first blood it rewards you for basically outplaying your opponent or taking a tower which is good um 25 less gold to allied champions down from 125 to 100 and you get gold uh 300 gold uh split between nearby champions so if it's just you you get 300 gold instead of 175 good change overall i think for uh especially for solo play jungle baron nasher they are they're nerfing baron um baron's attack speed's going down from 0.75 to 0.625 the corruption damage is going down corruption ratio is going down he's just they're making baron easier to kill because they're saying baron is too hard to take um, Scuttle Crab, respawn time increase, shrine duration increase. Right now, the early game meta is dominated by whether or not you're able to take Scuttle Crab. Um, oh, sorry about that. Um, so they they just want people to have have more time to set out to take Scuttle Crab, um, and have a bit more of a reward for that by increasing the actual movement speed shrine duration and the vision shrine duration from 75 to 90 seconds. But 
it it doesn't spawn um for 150 seconds after you kill it so say you take scuttle you can't just go back and get it like you the you can time it right like you know what's going to spawn again but it's just going to delay a bit to give the other jungler a little bit of time to catch up if if you're you're the type of jungler like a nunu who can just spawn camp scuttle crabs and kill them super super quickly it, it gives the other jungler more of a chance to i guess re recuperate from that Jungle monsters experience slightly increased at later levels, bumping a little bit of experience back in the jungle. They they are keeping the level one XP all the same for the monsters. I think yeah, level one EXP is all the same around the board, but they're just increasing some of the the later level EXP. So if you're if you're losing the jungle and you're getting counter jungled super hard, and the enemy jungler snowballing and they're just they're just beating on you and beating on you and beating on you. This gives you more of a chance to come back later in the game and push back a little bit against that snowball. Right now, an 8.10, with the way the, the jungle snowballing is, if your jungler gets ahead on the other jungler, there is not a whole lot the other jungler can do because you have jungle control, you can counter jungle camps. Camps are worth, like, losing a camp in the current jungle without taking an enemy camp is a really big deal because the jungle is all based around power farming and skirmishing the other jungler. So if you can't do that, if you can't get your camps, you can't keep up in EXP, you can't keep up in items, the other jungler is just going to skyrocket ahead because every time you see the other jungler, he can just kill you because it's a skirmish jungle meta. So this change kind of gives you a little bit more of an ability to come back in the jungle if you're behind because you're going to get more EXP for killing a monster if, if it's a higher level. Last hit assistance. <laughs> what? If a basic attack would fail to kill a minion by 4 health or less, it will kill that minion. Every patch after a patch 8.11, we will reduce this number by 1. Um. Okay. This is going to go away eventually, but this is still very stupid. Learn to last hit. Even if you're getting your ADs changed and everything, just learn to last hit. ARAM, don't care. Ping distance volume, don't care. Instant feedback, don't care. Bug fixes. Um, doesn't matter. Level up rewards, don't care. Chroma skins, the Vladimir skin looks pretty cool. Uh, this one looks pretty cool too, the Diana one. Other than that, don't really care. So uh, there is patch 8.11 rundown, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, see you on the stream and see you in the next videos. Thanks.